Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this yep. webinar. <laughs> sorry, oh, let I'm me sorry. just give yeah. some words about you, Richard. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm sorry to yeah. you. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I'm really very happy to introduce Richard. Richard, really, uh, you, have, you have just heard him. He's a credo master and freelance graphic designer. Richard lives in Jacksonville uh, in the United States. Um, he started out as a screen printer where he learned the basic of the business and production. He started he started teaching himself about the press, the pre-press and of the business and to do art on color separating using CorelDRAW. If you would like to learn more about Richard's journey, you can go either to the CorelDRAW Masters page on CorelDRAW.com or to, he, to his website www.fluidsn.com. Richard, yes, welcome. <laughs> Would you like to start now? Okay, here we go again. Sorry about that, Cecile. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, let's see if I can get rid of that. All right. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining this webinar. Um, today we're going to try to, uh, well, we're not going to try. We're going to design a, uh, a sports-themed T-shirt design for a local high school um, ballpark or you know anything along those lines that you can interchange uh, the main theme which is the the actual sports balls um, and technically you could also use this uh, for anything other than sports and we'll show you uh, some quick things you can do um, to get started uh, what I like to do is set my page size to the size that I'm going to design <coughs> and so I like to design at size so I'm going to set a page size of 12 by 12 um, that's a pretty decent full front design uh, for your basic t-shirt designs uh, we're going to go into the object manager and we're going to start creating some layers and let's see we're on page two here so uh, the first layer I like to rename and we're going to name this the shirt and this just let me know that this is going to be the shirt color and by double clicking the rectangle tool uh, it'll fill the entire page with a uh, rectangle and we can fill it with whatever color we want and I'm going to pick a gray for this and we'll lock that shirt layer and then we can start designing uh, <clears throat> okay, one of the f things that I like to do first um, is if I know what the shirt, the t-shirt designs are, and with screen printing you're usually limited to the number of colors based off of what the customer wants to pay for, so um, I'll go ahead and uh, start designing some colors. Using the color styles, we're going to go ahead and start adding a couple new color styles and we're going to base these, we're going to use these to design with, that way we can make quick and easy changes later down the line um, if needed. Um, by this little button right here, drops down a menu and hit new color style and we're going to add a couple and we'll go from there. Um, all right, let me make sure this is big enough here. Okay, I'm going to work in spot colors, so by clicking this first color style, we can go in here and we're going to pick our palettes. So I want spot, pantone, previous, and I'm going to use solid colors. So let's see here. Do you know the specific color? You can click this little button right here and let's click on find color and then just type in the number and we want 185 so that's the one I want double click that make sure it fills in and then we can select our next colors so let's see here 185 I'm going to do an orange 165 oh, let me get to the correct palette wrong one Palette libraries, spot, painting, previous. All right, let's find these colors. Let's see, orange 165. That's going to be for our basketball later down the line. 
It should stick. I'm not quite sure why it's not sticking, but I should be able to pull that up and the correct palette open up right here without having to go through this process. And that's the wrong one. I don't want one spot, not process. Time previous. There we go. Let's find that color. I'm going to do a brown, 160. Make sure that one's stuck. And let's see here. <clears throat> going to get two more colors in here. <clears throat> I keep hitting the process and I want spot every time. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go all the way up here because I know where black is. I want Pantone black. And here we're going to do the white. <clears throat> Libraries. Spot. Pantone. Previous. Oh, there we go. And then we'll get that transparent white. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, next thing we're going to do is <clears throat> we have our color styles up here. Um, we want to drag a couple colors down so we can generate color style color harmonies <clears throat> and drag each one individually and what we're going to do is we're going to add some gradients and with we'll start up at the top with the red and click this little color harmony fly out and new gradient <clears throat> we're going to do 10 gradients for each one <clears throat> let's make sure we do 10, and that color didn't stick, so I'll show you how we can fix that here in just a quick second. So we'll go back. Ah, messing up here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let's go back to this color, orange. Make sure you're clicking on the actual folder icon. That way it changes the entire gradient. Let's find that orange. I think I did 165. So. Why is that not? There we go. And we'll change this one back to red real quick. 185. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> now we have our colors that we're going to use for this design. So I'm going to minimize this a little bit so it's not so obtrusive here. Slide this down. One more. There we go. All right. We hit Control Save. I save about every two, three minutes every time I do a pretty big action. I always say just to be safe because you never know. Um, and let's go back into our object manager and there we go. Put them in both one docker here. And let's create a new layer. And Going back to the front page again here real quick, um, with this design I was presented with um, instructions from the customer. They wanted a uh, tribal winged looking type design. So <clears throat> let's see here, 10 steps for each color. So I knew pretty much what I wanted to do and after discussing with the customer some quick sketches um, we came up with a pretty decent layout they wanted. So the next thing that I did um, is, I didn't mean to do that one, um, let's see, 
we're going to open up Corel Connect and within Corel Draw under the default settings you have an application launcher you can go through it that way you can go through it um, there's a couple different ways I like to actually open up the program by its the standalone program um, you can access it through Corel using the tray and um, I'll show you that a little bit but um, I do like to just use this pr individual application um, keeps keeps my Corel clean um, so here in Corel Connect you have a bunch of options up here in the libraries and you can yeah, you know, if you have a membership, you automatically are able to connect to the Corel Connect, connect um, which searches the libraries with everything that's that's online. You can connect to Flickr, Fotilla, iStock Photo if you have your own account, and so forth. Um, down here in the folders, you can automatically have it search certain folders. Your entire computer, um, external drives, anything and whatnot, and then you can, once you have a folder that you like, you can actually drag that folder into your favorites folder and for easier and quicker access. Um, let me go ahead and delete that out of there. Um, I went ahead and uh, have, have it showing the, the clip art images that we're going to be using for this tutorial just to make it faster. And just to let you know that they are all, there's also a very good um, video um, on YouTube with on the Corel channel um, that shows you how to use Corel Connect. Um, it's a really good video and it'll give you a lot of information. Um, <clears throat> so these are the clip art images we're going to be using throughout the uh, the tutorial and so now we're going to what I'm going to do is minimize this. I had to change my my settings so everything is a lot larger than I'm used to. So I apologize for the issues here. Um, so I'm just going to minimize this. Um, and so usually what I do um, is I'll just drag the images and drop them into Corel. Um, you don't have to do that. You can open up the Corel Docker. And let's see here. Let's see if we can get it back to open. There we go. And you can see all the images here. And we've got the tray down here. So you can drag these into your tray. Why is my tray not showing up? There we go. <clears throat> Everything's a lot larger, so I'm not used to everything. I apologize about that. So you can drag the images that you're going to use in your design into this tray. You can actually shift select and select them all for easier and quicker access. I usually do it the other way and just drag what I need. Um, very rarely am I using you know tons and tons of clip art for one design. Um, so let's go ahead and get this minimized. It's not what I want minimized. There we go. Back to new tray. This little webinar deal is... There we go. All right. Okay, so we're going to start off with the with the tribal background. Um, it's going to work a lot easier for us. I'm dragging and dropping this in here and go ahead and get this sized up. <clears throat> it's a simple simple tribal flame looking clip art. You can find them anywhere. Um, you know, people might not use in clip art but you can tweak the clip art quite a bit and uh, to use and create custom art that nobody will know is even clip art. Um, so one one thing we're going to do here is we're going to try to give this more of a beveled look by using the contour tool and <clears throat> we're going to do an inside contour. Let's change this to 
a very light gray. And I'm using a very small contour to give it more of an airbrushed look, uh, more of a raster look. Whereas if there were large contour steps <coughs> and offset, it, it really wouldn't give you that look. So let's get this back to 0.5 and see how many we can get in here. All right, there we go. Got 50 steps here. Now we're having some issues down here, so we can fix that fairly easy. I'm just going to undo real quick. And I'm going to break these apart. We're having some really good results over here on this left side. I don't know why this is doing this. Let's see here. These are stuck together, that's why. I'm going to clean these up real quick and get rid of this. And then we'll just duplicate this one side. Oop, don't want to get that node gone. Right. Uh, sometimes clip art just doesn't work the way you want it, and you have to get in there and clean it all up. Um, okay, here we go. So now let's go back. <clears throat> Our last settings were memorized, so all we have to do is go in here, and I'm just going to push that down, push that back up. There we go. Now I do a lot of customizing, so <clears throat> um, my draw might look a little bit different than yours. And I usually pull out a lot of the tools that I use frequently. Um, you know, to keep this same, I want to keep. You know, I want to duplicate this exact same contour, and so I've got the contour properties where I customized over here. So all I have to do is just a real quick click and get get that copied over. I duplicated this. I have let's see here by pressing the uh, plus key on your number pad, you can duplicate in the exact same spot. And then holding the control, I just direct, grab this handle and flipped it. And that keeps it that that mirrors the image. Now there's other ways you can do this. The, the, this is the quickest way for myself. So let's see here. I'm going to rename this layer real quick. <clears throat> see lines. And I'm going to do one more little deal to make this pop. The reason I did this black, the contours black to uh, to a real light gray is to give us the option of using it more like a grayscale image, <clears throat> and you will see why here in just a sec. I'm gonna double click on the pick tool so I can select everything, and I'm gonna do a create boundary real quick. Well, hopefully real quick. Due to all the uh, contours, it might take it a second. There we go. I'm going to fill that with red. Um, one thing I do need to do is I need, we need to go back here real quick. And should be using the colors here in the color styles. So I'm going to fill that with red. And I'm going to apply a transparency to it. Uniform. Here, add, multiply. Oh, there we go. Pretty neat little effect there. Um, done fairly simple, simply. And I'm going to copy that transparency object to my clipboard here real quick, so we can modify these to the proper colors. And 
Let's see here. We need to add one more color. A very light shade of gray. Let's just move this down here and we'll go ahead and add another gradient. 10. And what we want to do. Color picker tool is <coughs> great. <coughs> And then we're just going to copy these real quick to match. Zoom in here so I can select that master object. Double click to fill it. And I'm just going to paste <clears throat> paste that back down on top to get that color going. Okay, now back to our object manager. We're going to add the next layer. And usually I have my sketches next to me so I know what I'm doing as I'm drawing. Um, I don't have the one right next to me because it's right here. So I'm just going to go back and forth just to get a quick look at it. Um, all right. So our next element is going to be a, let's go back into curl connect, and we're going to throw a shield in here, let's drag that over, click OK, and I want the wreath. <coughs> Curl Connect is pretty awesome. It definitely helps um, to visually see what you are looking for. And I'm going to copy this. Let's rename this Shield. And I'm going to add a new layer since I had the wreath in there. Name Wreath. I'm going to hide the wreath layer real quick while we're working on this shield. I'm going to zoom in. And we're going to go back to our color styles and make sure we get everything colored using those, those color styles. And let's see here. Let's make that red. And what we're going to do here is we'll fill this in with some lighter colors just so we can show you how the styles are going to work later down the line. Most of the shield will get covered up in the design, so <clears throat> don't need to go into too much detail there. Let's go back to our object manager and open up our wreath. A little bit of dragging, dropping, moving things around, um, you know, until you get get that look you like. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and hide everything. That way, I can see what I'm working with here. Um, we want to color these again, so I'm going to go back to my color styles. And I use a little macro um, called Select Same. Um, you can do Find and Replace within draw, um, but macros are a great thing. They speed everything up and the select same is awesome. Um, I can click on an object, choose my perimeters real quick, and select just what I want to select. So there. Saw so how quick that was. <clears throat> Gotta love curl. Um, let's go back to the manager, lock the wreath for now. Let's see where we are. Okay, it's it's getting there slowly. Um, you know, there's a couple things we can do, and I'll we'll work on those if we have a little bit of time. <clears throat> uh, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and let's bring in one of our balls. 
So I'm just going to create a new layer, label it ball, and we'll bring up connect real quick and pull in this volleyball. <clears throat> Some of my color management settings, that's why that menu is popping up. Um, it's to help me later down, you know, keep all my images the same. Uh, so just going to size this up a little bit, try to get that look and let's go ahead and hide that everything and make sure we color these the same as well. You need to make sure everything you bring into your document when working with color styles, we're going to fill that red. Um, you go ahead and modify as you work because if you don't once you, if you do a major intense design, it could take you forever to go back and tweak and try to find those colors. Um, so now we've got our ball. We'll open these up. Using layers like this, um, you know, it is a little time intensive, but later, later in your designing, um, it, it'll save you time to be able to go to specific elements, make certain changes, and access them fairly quickly. So I'm going to pull this wreath up. Make sure I switch to the correct layer there. I want this to show up more at the top. All right. <clears throat> Let's see, F4. So zoom out. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to uh, do the banner here real quick, and we'll create a new layer, name it banner, and we'll pull in that banner. Um, we've got a little trick here that I know a lot of people have issues with, and see if this will be able to help you out a little. So pull this up. And what we want to do is we want to hide part of the banner behind the ball and have the rest in front. Um, when you ungroup this banner, it's only composed of a couple objects, so we're going to have to do some trimming and so forth. Um, since we're going to use, since I want, I'm going to go for this side of the banner, um, make sure everything, well, first let's color this real quick. Color styles. Just select everything that's black. And <clears throat> gonna group everything and fill that white. Let's group everything and go back to our object manager. Just want the ball showing right now and I want to grab the outermost of the ball just to help me. I'm going to paste it on the banner just to give me an idea, a little better visual of what I need to do here. And using the freehand tool, just going to go in this little area right here. Got to zoom in and we're making a cookie cutter essentially. So, I'm just going to do this a little fast, uh, that way we can get through the webinar and give you an idea. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to delete that guide that I made here. And then now I'm going to open up my shaping docker, which I can't see. So here we go. I want to intersect. And that just, as you can see, exactly what it did. I now I have two objects. And with this same cookie cutter, I am going to trim and trim it. And nudge this back over. And we now have the banner parts. We'll create a new layer, label banner bottom. And I'm going to grab this little piece drag it to the layer or you can copy and paste it and get to move that layer behind the ball. 
quick and simple. Um, that little cookie cutter steps um, works with any vector object and you know makes it to where you can easily go you know move stuff in front of each other instead of having the entire object. I could have just copied and pasted um, certain things and used the eraser tool, um, but this is a little better, cleaner, and easier to manipulate later down the line. So let's see here. Okay, next thing we're going to do is work on our wings. And create a new layer, wings. Um, let's move I'm going to hide everything real quick while we're working on this wings layer, and that goes in the very back. So, um, <clears throat> creating your own wings is actually not a very hard thing to do. Um, just going to use the freehand tool and play with some nodes here. Just get the general basic shape that you like. And let's fill that white real quick. We'll edit it with the color styles. I just don't want to go back and forth, and I don't have the room to keep them both open like I normally have. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this. I'm just going to show you a quick, easy way to create a custom brush. And pull this out here. This is for that little center line. And we're going to trim it. Trim. Now we'll go back to the color styles. Fill this a color. And we're going to add a contour. Don't want that same contour. We're going to go to the outside. And let's fill that with black, and we only want one step. You're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking to get that exactly the way you want it, um, but it gives you a general idea. Um, you can add some notches in it to make it a little better. I'm going to break that apart, that contour, and group them together. And <clears throat> Now we're going to switch to our artistic media tool. Click on the objects that we just created, and up here on the um, <coughs> property bar, um, since we have the tool selected, and then clicked on, I'm going to click off, and as you can see, the save artistic media is grayed out. You can't use it because nothing's selected. If I click on it, now I can save it and just name this feather and I already have one labeled that so we're going to feather two have one there I think I hit no so let's do this again feather four that'll work and we can delete that now um, so I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and with the with the artistic tool and brush selected, um, you go to your custom, and the last thing you created should pop up. Um, but if it didn't, you can just scroll around and you'll you'll find it. And we'll use this, and it might look a little funky right now. You just have to uh, play with the settings to get that. That look that you want. There we go. That's a little better. Get in here, clean up these nodes. I normally use a tablet, but I'm using my mouse right at, right now. That way I don't have to go back and forth. And so now we have our wing feathers. And as you can see, you can there's all kinds of things you can do with that. I'm not going to go through the entire wing and then just you know, change the sizes to get different size feathers. I already created one. Um, that way we can speed through this a little bit faster. So I'm going to go make sure I'm on my wings layer. And through Connect, we'll 
pull up our wings. You, you might even have wing clip art that you, you'd like to use as well instead of creating your own. Um, this is more of a custom one. Um, let's go back to color styles. Fill that with black. I'm going to select all these and I'm going to do a lighter shade of gray. Group everything together, go back and let's pull everything up so we can see where we're working. Get this into the area that we want. Plus on the number pad for a quick easy duplicate. And There we go. Maybe stretch it out a little bit. Um, just play around. Um, every time you put stuff together, and I want the wreath. You know, just start playing around until you get the, the look that you're after. And get this ball a little bit bigger. As you see, it, you know, we can move the ball pretty much all the way to the very end and it looks like it's wrapping around um, with that little cookie cutter steps we did earlier. All right. <clears throat> So now pretty much all that's left to do is create your text depending, you know, I did a uh, put in Wolfson here for a school name. Um, let's, let's do this banner real quick. Let's go back to the banner and let's modify these colors. Okay, we only have a couple, couple objects here. So this right here, color styles. What we're going to do is we're going to do a gradient using the uh, interactive fill tool. When this was first introduced, I was in heaven. Um, one of the best tools there is. And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more. There we go. So now we have a pretty good gradient. Let's double check this. Okay, and then we had it white inside. <clears throat> All right. Let me zoom out here real quick. Um, let me check the time, make sure it looks I'm gonna have to speed up here a little bit. I apologize for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's text. Let's add some quick text here. Um, I'm not going to do Wolfson. That was a local high school. Um, I'm just going to do, let's see here. Let's do Corel. And pick up good sports font. Tiffany. And, you know, as with any designing, you know, lots of playing around. Um, I want that envelope tool, Docker. Let's see here. Add a quick little arch. And let's make sure we fill this. I'm going to do a quick inside contour. Break that apart. And <clears throat> actually, let's go ahead and undo. Let me keep that contour on. Let's make it a. Let's go to the outside, and we'll make it two steps from around those corners. And we have all sorts of great tools here with the contour. Um, Right here, we're changing the thickness <clears throat> um, to get a little nicer look. Let's beef that up a little. Now we can break this apart, and we're going to fill. I'm way too slow, aren't I, Cecile? Uh, let's see here. 
I showed the main portions here. I apologize. Um, going a little too slow. But one thing I want to show you is the fact that we change these color styles. Um, what we can do is we can go in here. I'm going to fill this red. That way I can show it. If you click, <clears throat> click on the folder, you can just scroll down here and change everything, including your gradients. Um, any of the colors that you used, as long as you click on the folder, you can change everything in the design and then quick, easy change. We got the tents right here. And I'm going to change this one back to black. Oh, come on, go down here. There's black. Come on, get in here. There we go. And as you can see, everything changes. And that's a handy tool for doing quick color changes where your customers might want to see a different color scheme. Um, but you do have to remember, you have to work in your color styles. Uh, you can't work in your colors down here um, or else they will not work. You'll have to go through, select everything, and make sure you change them to the actual color styles. Um, I'm going to fill this gray. <clears throat> and I had the flames there not showing. So I'm going to go back and change these red real quick so you can actually see the flames change to a different color as well. <clears throat> Get a, change the different look depending on the color of the shirt and so forth. So we'll get that back to a red. All right. Um, I do want to pull up one more thing. Um, if we have time. To use the different balls, um, essentially all you need to do is Let's see, -E -E. create a new layer. I spelled that wrong. There we go. And we're going to pull in that baseball. And you can do this with all any, any of the balls. Um, in the webinar image, it shows all the different balls um, that you can put in there. That way you can make a quick, easy change for all the teams at the same school. And let's see here. Let's hide that original one. And you just want to make sure you color everything with your color styles. That way everything changes when you go to do a quick color style change. Fill that. So what I'm going to do is select this text up here real quick. Let's add a little gradient. Orange to red. And you know, you just got to get in there and start playing. Um, you can come up with all sorts of different, different ideas. Um, I want to I'm gonna use the smart fill tool here. <coughs> oh, come on! <coughs> Hopefully that'll go quick. Um, I just want to show you one other. I'm on the wrong layer, that's why. Object text. I, was, I still had the baseball layer selected, so it put it underneath it. Um, actually, I'm just going to duplicate this. Use the eraser tool. And we'll throw another transparency on there. Fill that with white. Give it a little bit of a highlight.
And now let's let me keep that. And I just want to show you again uh, the quick ch color changes since we added a gradient in here. And let's change that to a blue. Picking some ugly colors, but combinations. Um, but gives you an idea um, how you're able to quickly modify these colors. Um, <clears throat> Get rid of. Actually, I'm gonna keep that here. Uh, Cecile, do we still have a little bit more time, or are we getting close to questions? Well, we are getting close, um, but we have three questions at the present time. So, if you want to take perhaps two more minutes um, to to show some additional techniques, and then it would okay. give us enough time to answer the three questions. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. I'm going to hide all these real quick, except for the text. And in the, the image, uh, let's see here, let's create a new layer. I'm going to pull in the pattern. And <clears throat> just want to show you the pattern. Um, I actually went to Wikipedia and they have a nice image of a herringbone pattern. I traced it manually with uh, the freehand tool and then used the align and distribute and was able to uh, create the, the vector pattern. And you can actually use it as a pattern fill. Um, I prefer, need to move this back to the text layer. Now we can shoot that down. Effects, power clip, place it inside. And that's how I did the pattern. Um, and then you can go in and resize and get that look that you're after. Um, the customer actually specified they wanted a herringbone pattern in the text um, of their design. <clears throat> so that shows you some of the techniques that I, may, that I do and use when I create. Um, as I'm creating, I think of new things um, and ways of doing different designs, um, different layouts. And when if I think of a new idea, usually I'll create it and just copy and paste it on a different page in the document. That way I have multiple options to show a customer. And 90% of the time they'll pick it pick one of them because they have multiple options. If you only show them one, they start getting nitpicking and say, can you change this, do this, do that. If you show them a couple different ideas, um, they're able to get in there. Um, so let's, but, you know, creating your layers um, for the different balls. And then all you have to do is Make sure you turn off the print and the eyes, and you're able to add different different balls, different objects, and print those, um, and have the exact same design for all the different sports uh, for the same entity, same school, um, and really quick, really easy, cost effective for the client, and easy for you. So I hope I was able to show a couple a uh, couple different techniques and. Um, help you with your designing. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure like uh, many people um, have um, really enjoyed looking at you creating this uh, beautiful design. Um, so some questions. Um, I see you, Gita, online. Um, she's, uh, you are a very loyal uh, attendee, and I would like to thank you very much, you, Gita. That's great to see you uh, in each webinar asking a very relevant questions. So some questions from Ogita. Uh, can you please explain what are those icons above the color palette, uh, above the horizontal ruler in your workplace? Okay. These are all um, custom, custom macros and actions within CorelDRAW. Um, you know, you have to go into your uh, your tools customization, and they're different commands. Um, one thing is that you know I would stress is to 
spend a couple hours and look through your command bars and you can actually change the way they look which is what I've done that way um, I can recognize them a lot easier um, based on how I color them and so forth like this macro right here this will add reg this is the registration marks macro it will add registration marks you know around my design and and so forth bounding box start node um, just the the whole thing about customizing with Corel draw is it just you know it speeds up your production so if you're able to go in there and um, yeah this does color swatches remove duplicates remove overprints um, I have everything there um, this color replacing uh, bounding boxes guides so um, you can customize everything and by going in and even customizing the look of them um, even speeds things up. <clears throat> Hope that answers your question. Yeah, uh, well Yogita, if uh, you want some additional information just send me your question uh, uh, through the console, uh, question uh, console. Um, question from Miguel, how do you manage to scale an object while keeping it center in the sheet at the same time? Uh, let me, I'm going to go add the page here just so I can show you real quick. Um, actually, let me delete that. I'm going to double click a rectangle and if you hold the control key, uh, if you hold the shift, excuse me, shift will constrain um, from the center. And if you hold the control, you can actually flip horizontal, vertical. Um, it all depends, um, but you're you're keeping it exactly the way it is without manipulating, resizing. Um, so shift would be from the center, and control lets you move left and right, and keeping the exact same. It's a nifty little uh, little action there that um, hidden. Not many people know, um, but it and it helps out tremendously. Go back here to this one. There any more questions? Cecile. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, there is a question, but I'm, I don't think I fully understand it. I don't know if you would understand it. How do you get the select SA window? Oh, uh, he was asking the select same. Um, the, oh, okay. that, that, that select same that I had shown, um, was actually, it's actually a, a third-party uh, macro. Um, that it, it is a free macro. Um, that if you contact me, I can show you where you can get that. Um, but you do have to uh, install it, and you know. Um, but it is a great macro and saves a lot of time. Um, it is free, so. Okay, excellent. So, I don't know if you can find. Uh, do you think it would be quick to find the, the micro to show people, or? Um... Well, well. As far yeah, I, you know, as far as the, the you know this specific macro, well, open up a new page. You know, it is an outside macro, um, and <clears throat> tools, customizations, commands, <clears throat> and essentially, I always do show all here under commands and give it a second and it'll load and if you actually go through these you'll be amazed at the commands that aren't even documented in some of the Corel documentation um, they're in here they're just not documented um, and by going through these it gives you shortcut keys you can actually go in and you know change you know pretty much anything you want um, with these macros, and um, you can you can search for certain things, um, but this one is is select same, and it is it's not this one does not come with Corel. 
it is a third party, so you would actually have to go to an outside website and um, download it. But it is free. Um, you can you it, you can find it on macromonster.com, and it's a all Corel draw um, macro website. <clears throat> If you learn v how to code VBA, you can create your own macros all within Corel okay. as well. So Ulrike, uh, the macro is free. Um, on Richard, could you uh, repeat the name of the, um, of the website? It is macromonster.com. Macromonster.com. Excellent. Thank you very much, Richard. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, I'm just answering a question um, on line at the present time, um, but I think we should be good for now. I haven't received um, any further questions. So anyway, uh, it's time to go, unfortunately, already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you very, very much, Richard, uh, for sharing today uh, some of your techniques. Um, thank you also to everyone um, for your time on interest in Quadro. Um, graphic suite. Um, I'd like to, if you'd like to know more about the suite, about X6, or to download a free trial version, um, you just um, go s simply uh, on coral.com slash coraldraw. Also, for your information, next month's webinar will happen on Thursday, January the 17th, uh, from 12 to 1. Um, Stefan Lindblad, uh, who is our illustrator, graphic designer, Artist on Quadro Master will provide you with this um, with his insights to create storyboards on comics. Uh, we hope to see you in. I wish you all the best for the rest of the day. Uh, again, Richard, thank you very much. Um, thank you and bye bye everybody. Thank you. <coughs>